Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're with us on this Friday morning, April the 19th. Uh, getting over halfway finished up with April. Let's get started with our weather, brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning. Drew Pollard and hardworking crew taking care of our everyday comfort needs. We're looking at a high today of 82, low of 67. Not a bad day. And we're looking at the water temperature, 72 degrees the last couple of days. So I'm looking for a good weekend, some good fishing by a lot of folks, with exception of the, the river readings brought to us by Panama City, Coca-Cola, the rivers are high. We'll talk about that later in the fishing report, but we're looking at uh, the Apalachicola at Blunstown, 19.4. Okay, got a little bit of fall. Well, it's this high. And uh, the Choctaw of Careville, got a little, it's falling out some. Right now it's reading nine foot, so it got, got out of double digits, but both rivers will be falling. Okay, so the tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Believe it or not, we have neap tides on such a pretty day. Neap tides today and tomorrow, not much. Movement right there, that brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Take a look, let's look, go into our fishing game times in this segment right here on Friday. Brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. 849 or 1049 this morning and this evening from 909 to 1109. So it'll be, uh, the wind's gonna be coming out west, southwest at about 13. And we're on the verge of some folks starting to do some little flounder gigging. It's a little early still. And the ones I've talked about or heard about, they're on the small side, but uh, it's, it's going to weather, is, is, you know, that west-southwest wind, it, it should lay down later on today, like it has not done the last couple of weeks. But uh, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at it. We always talk about uh, good things and all. Every now and then something comes up. It's just a, a sad situation. I like to share those things with you because as all outdoorsmen, we need just to continue to be aware. And I've always talked about as, you know doing things solo by yourself. And I'm world, one of the world's worst about going out to the woods or going out in the water by myself. And it's not good. And here's the situation here. Uh, here, just right here. This is up in, off the coast of North Carolina. This was a week or two ago. I, I just stayed up with it to see if they could find it. It's April 7th. Uh, basically, a Coast Guard a report of a missing boater, Jeffrey Kale, 47 years, went fishing in the Atlantic Ocean in a 32 foot Cape Horn, now, which is a fine and a safe boat. Okay, so they started looking for him, and, and what, what happened? Somebody ran across his boat, and, and nobody was in this boat. And uh, the seas are calm right there. Look at the twin engines. I mean, is he rigged up for fishing? Wow. So they're looking, you know, and uh, here's his wife, a missing man's boat they found off Wrightsville Beach where the Wright brothers uh, flew the plane. And uh, he and his lovely wife, and, and, uh, and after they ended up suspending, I followed this for a week or so because it was just interesting to me. I was hoping and praying they would find him. And uh, they suspended it. Here's some pictures of him fishing. He loved to fish. And uh, but that folks, they never they uh, they've called off the search and they never did find him and compare and and uh, you know uh, up to speculation as to what happens. So uh, it's just not it's not good to go out by yourself. And, and well, we had just on the opposite end of the spectrum, what two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we had a kayaker out of Great Beach that got blown out. Uh, the quarterback from South Carolina and football coach up there in Alabama. And they found him. That was a good ending to what could have been a tragic story. And he was by himself. So uh, I'm just, uh, uh, don't go solo if you can help it. If you do go solo, uh, stay in con constant contact on, on the boat because uh, I, I don't know. I don't want to talk about what happened. I'm not sure what happened, but uh, it, it is a tragedy. He had a couple little kids too. All right, let's move on to some uh, good stuff right here. This is over here. I like to talk about tournaments. This is not local. It's right down in Panacea. It's a big tournament. I follow it every year. That's not, I mean, you can drive down there. It's not that far, about an hour and a half to Panacea. Beautiful area. But they're having a big tournament. They have an offshore division. They have an inshore division. And uh, 1,500, is, you know, it's a uh, grouper, snapper, redfish. Uh, the typical one. They have a kayak division and a youth division. So. A good tournament down that way. Good for them. 
May 3rd and 4th, we talked about the Florida Outdoor Expo, and wow, this is down in West Palm Beach, and this be full of kind of, I wish we'd go, that first weekend of May, folks, there's all kind of things going on. But Outdoor Expo, this is, they do some really good, I've been researching this, and it just started, and I wish we'd do some up this way. And also coming up that same weekend, the Bayou Bash, we talked, we've had the ladies on the show, uh, the Swivel Sisters, and there will be May 4th, that was the first weekend, and here's, of course, we, here it is right here, some pictures from, from last time. Okay, here, I may have showed you this. Our bluebirds are hatching out. Gail's bluebirds, because she's the one who takes care of them, and uh, I sent that to my Chip's two daughters, my two granddaughters, Mandy and me, uh, and I said, listen, girls, I, I've got a picture of y'all I don't want to show y'all, so I sent this to them. I said, I'd tell y'all because their mouth is open. Ted and Andrew Gagnay up in Lynn Haven, they sent this to me uh, a while back. I just want to talk about, I know Bay County continues to build offshore reefs, which is good. I would like to see some inshore reefs built. Amen. There are more and more people fishing in the bays. I'm going to forward an email that I sent to Scott Jackson and one I received from Jessica Graham. So thanks, Ted. Thank you, Ted, for pursuing this and keep me posted on what we do. Uh, in inshore reefs are important, especially just a natural ones like the oyster bars. We'll just get those going. Speaking of things going on the first weekend of May, how about something else? Over here at the Biofevia Center on Highway 20 in Freeport, it's a Red Fox Rendezvous. And uh, so anyway, I, I don't go to those things, but it's, just, uh, it's interesting if that's something you want to do, see some Red Fox Rendezvous, okay? Speaking of catawba worms, Steve Benfang posted this. This is on Facebook the other day. Are there any bait stores that sell catawba worms anymore? My dad <laughs> has a half dozen trees, no worms in years. He plays a mosquito sprayer, but I think the mockingbirds ate them all. I would go along with dad with a mosquito sprayer because we've had mockingbirds for generation after generation. They've always had, but when the mosquito sprayer came out, that's when we started missing them. That's my strong, and then different people, uh, Talking about, uh, they're looking. They all everybody's looking for them, and then somebody sent a picture. Uh, has some cute and Gina bird has some hatch out. See them right there. Is that not cool? So uh, they're they're just starting to hatch out. And then why do we do catawba worms? Stand early called a few Tuesday. In fact, called 24. And what did he catch them on? Frozen catawbas. Okay, is that not cool? And that's why we, I'm always that's why I'm always talking about uh, catawba worms because they're they're good fish bait. It's as simple as that. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. I just want to talk a, little, a few minutes on the uh, pier fishing. We talk about it often, but we have such a history and heritage of pier fishing here in the Florida Panhandle, I'd mentioned in Navarre Pier, but right here in Ground Zero, the Panama City Beach Pier, the County Pier, especially the County Pier for locals, that's such a history. And, uh, and then uh, we, ha we have so many, it goes back to uh, what I remember, it goes back to the 80s and 90s starting, then just, you know, it just kept growing and growing until uh, uh, it really became a really big deal on catching that first cobia this time of year. And, and I can remember being out there and just watching these guys. I mean, they were just a group of guys, they were pier guys, and they just had this passion for pier fishing. Uh, I remember, uh, I don't remember all the names. I know Howard Farrell was one, uh, uh, Steve Thomas, uh, Jeremy Lindsay, Scott's son. They, but the big thing was if you saw, uh, you saw that cobia coming to you, way out, coming, coming this way, and especially from the county pier, sometimes from the uh, state park pier, you said, first cast. If you said first cast, everybody honored your cast, and you had an actual first cast. And after you had a first cast, then you, I mean, everybody else is going to try to catch them too. But what a tradition we have! And uh, I, I, I was, I'm just so proud of it. And then Popeye, uh, Popeye Fields on, on the beach pier, he was so good. He had his passion for it also, and I just, I just love Popeye. He would call and give me reports. I would call him, and and I would just. Uh, uh, now, I remember Scott, in fact, the other night I was, saying, I was going to call Scott Lindsay, and uh, he's not with us anymore. I was going to call him because we'd always talk about this time of year, catching those Kobe off the pier. So here, I want to show you some, some of my history pictures here. I did actually, in my book, I actually did a story on Popeye 
a Popeye and a Pier. Uh, he fell in love with this place as a 10-year-old vacationing from Birmingham. And uh, here he is right there from 1941 to 2001. And he, uh, pier fishing, here's some pier fishing in the original pier where Pineapple Willis is here. <laughs> you, think, you think it's crowded now, what about then? This is 1959. So I did, I just thought pier fishing was so strong. In fact, they ended up naming the Russell, they named it after Mayor Dan Russell and Popeye Fields, the two guys right there. I just, uh, just a great guy. I just, he loved fishing. And here's, here's uh, Louis Spinks, and he was from Birmingham, and he was one that had a little spec rig that Captain Roy uh, got, got some, he actually uh, got it from him. Louis Spinks there off the old pier. And uh, here, here's a picture I just showed, but and uh, it's just really, really some good stuff. So anyway, the pier fishing, uh, I got to thinking about you know, those guys from Birmingham. That I, I got to thinking last night about all the uh, folks who came down over the year from Birmingham, Alabama, and and love fishing, settled here. I, I made a little, little uh, copy, a list of them. I just off the top of my head. I know there's a lot more than ones that in my book that I thought about was uh, A. R. Holly, Richard Holly's dad. Uh, he, he started coming down here, and they ended up moving down here. Richard, A.R. was a captain, and Richard was a captain. Uh, Tiny Archer from Birmingham, Alabama. He, he you know, had a grocery store up there, and his wife said, if you, if you go down there every weekend, we might as well move down there. And I said, he said, that's all he wanted to hear. And of course, his grandson, Billy Archer, one of the best captains around. We fish with him every year. Uh, about uh, Louis Spinks, I just showed him. Uh, Charlie Hendricks. Charlie was not a captain, but he loved fishing. And in fact, I put him right here. Uh, see this right here? This is uh, that big grouper he used to fish all the time. He's a PE teacher at Highland Park Elementary and started the actual fishing club in Highland Park Elementary, which I think uh, I'm going to have some pictures of it. But pier fishing is just, is just so, so cool. Let me go to this uh, fishing club that he actually started. Here it is right here, Highland Park. This is the 23rd year, thanks to Charlie Hendricks and, and uh, Okay, you're getting it started. Highland Park's 23rd fishing tournament is in full swing. Check out all the fun the kids have. The tournament lasts through the month of April, the whole month of April. So here's just some pictures. Look at that little background. They weigh them in and put the fish in it. Uh, Coach Steve Breland is doing it now, former student of mine, and he's carrying on that tradition. Look at these kids. We're gonna try to get them to come on the show and look at mom and dad, everybody's happy. Got that little, look at the little fish down there. Is that not cool? That's a good job, and I really appreciate them going on. 23rd year, and also North Bay Haven, uh, the elementary school in North Bay Haven has a fishing club, and they're invited to come on the show also. All right, let me move on. We've got some more pictures real quick. we got the, uh, here we go, that big, talking about getting back to Choctatchee River, James Singletary, on this nice catfish. I think they fried it up yesterday to fish fry. Good job. That was recently, okay. So, someone sent this, Saltwater Hills Everything. Uh, Jeff Thomas sent that. The Thomas, and speaking of Jeff Thomas, biggest pompano I ever caught. This is the Thomas family I mentioned the other day. Now that's not wings on a pompano. That's his T-shirt. I first was like, what is that? An angelfish? <laughs> but that's a big pompano. And uh, Steve Thomas' son, the Thomas family tradition continues of catching some fine fish. He measured it out, folks. That's right over 18 inches. That's a nice, healthy pompano off the pier. And it weighed it, it was three pounds, 3.68. That's a big pompano there. Good job, the Thomas family. And then uh, they, they call here, here's uh, Christian Mitchell and Corey Mitchell. They're a good fisherman and the first pompano off the beach. That's a great picture there. <laughs> you don't see a lot of people, that's nice. Okay, I'm covered, okay, I've got, I've got most of that stuff covered and uh, that's it. I think we've gotten everything taken care of. Ah, real quick, I wanna throw this in too. Big Field Hathaway. That bear I talked about the other day, let's read this. He just sent this to me. Hey, Coach, the bear you talked about on the show, they got the turkey, sound like the same one that destroyed my chicken yard and got 11 of our chickens back in January. I live less than a mile from Long Branch Road. I haven't seen him since. I didn't get a photo of the bear, but he did leave a fingerprint. So here, here's a, okay, I got some pictures Field sent. Okay, right here. Okay, he left them. Okay. Got into the chicken yard, chicken pen, and just got 11 of, of Big Phil's chicken. Okay, and there's a track right there. And so he, got, he went from the turkey to the chickens. And uh, I do, uh, when Phil sends me, Phil, I'm on, at the bottom right here, 
see you later, Big Phil, my former honor student. So uh, we uh, laughed. Uh, Phil Riddle was not an honor student, but he was a great outdoorsman, and he made he made decent grades to get by. But I would, thank you, Phil. Always good to hear from you, and appreciate your viewership. So uh, we're gonna get ready now. We got our drawing coming up. Uh, let's see, the drawing's coming up, and but the book here, I, I started looking through it last night, and I just uh, talking about Popeye and, and appear, and again. We have such rich heritage in so many different things, not just the pier fishing, the boat building, the early captains, the, all those things, and we want to hold on to it, and we want to, like our guests were talking about, uh, preserve our area as much as we can. We need to plan, and we need to protect and pres preserve. I like that slogan the uh, uh, politician had on, on, the, on his uh, sign the other day. It's very, very important. Uh, I'm going to do a draw. We're going to draw the seafood, but I'm going to go ahead and get set up for the Friday fishing port. We'll draw from there, and then uh, we'll get on the Friday fishing for it. So hang around, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's uh, first of all take our, our drawing, take care of it, and it's brought to us by Tarpanock Seafood. And really good fresh seafood down there. So the $20 gift certificate is going to all the way from Panama City, Heather Taylor. Congratulations, Heather, and the big red snapper. And I saw some pictures of some really big snapper being caught off of Carabelle. Of course, I had, had to release them, but it was a really big snapper. I'm around 20, 25 pounders. And the winner here is from Henson Crossroads up there. This is Danny Joe Strint up there, Henson Crossroads. So we're, uh, we're getting started with our famous Friday fishing forecast. Brought to us each week by the good folks of Jessica Ling Insurance and Financial Group and Matt Andrews of Andrews of Hammerdown Roofing. Two good local folks, Small Business America, working hard, the crew working hard. On report, the first thing I will talk about and, uh, is the river. All the rain we had uh, earlier really got the rivers high, but they're falling down, and we talked about it just a few minutes ago. Cat fishing should be pretty good, pretty good now, not great, should be pretty good all, all through the river system as the water starts receding, especially coming out of those sloughs. I, I, I always like to put bush hooks uh, at the mouth of the sloughs. Uh, used to be the only bush hooks there, but now a lot of other people do it too. So anyway, on fresh water. Also, on locations, I got a good report from Destin. Let's, let's zoom over here to Destin because we were talking about, uh, I, I got to do that wedding in Destin, I, I sort of got, uh, really interested in it. Destin, Crab Island, the Spanish, according to the uh, bait shops over there, and fishermen over there, the Spanish are still in Choctahatchee Bay, but they're north of Crab Island. They're hanging around the north of Crab Island, and it's just a really uh, uh, a good area to catch fish in, and you can get away, get away from the crowd and, and uh, that area there. And also, it talked about the Pompano, Pompano Strong, and I think that's the strongest part of the whole panhandle, is fishing over there at Henderson Beach uh, State Park. And we've talked about going surf fishing there. In fact, it's right here, Henderson Beach State Park. Uh, surf fishing there. State Park's open to everybody. So you can fish there and uh, that, that's gonna be good. The first king, that's why I was looking up. The first king that caught off the pier was caught Wednesday of this week off the Destin Pier. So that, when you see that, that's a, that's a really good sign. Okay, Chalkatchee Bay, the, the overall, overall has been, they said even fishing with live shrimp, uh, they've caught redfish and they've caught some trout, but it's been a little bit on the slow side over in Choctahatchee Bay. Uh, moving on down to the San Andrew Bay system, uh, again, it's been, it hasn't been a, a week where you write home about and tell about all the fishing uh, that you're doing down here because it's been, it's been a little on the slow side. They are catching some redfish and they are catching some trout, but it's been sort of picky. Bridge fishing, I just haven't seen very many people bridge fishing uh, this week. The wind has really, has really uh, put a hamper on, on, on our fishing th this past week. So uh, I, if I were going to fish this weekend, I'd, I'd try to get some really good fresh bait, even some live bait to fish along the, br the bridges and all. The, uh, on the East Bay, they, now, over here in East Bay, they have caught some nice trout uh, over there at the mouth of Sandy Creek. That's been, been a good... Good spot right there, Sandy Creek. Uh, moving down to St. Joe, St. Joe Bay, 
has been has been a more active of all the bays I've, uh, from what I've gathered in my research this week of all the bays have been more in the St. Joe Bay more activity they've had some good rest fish schools coming in there and that actually caused some flounder again like I said the flounder on the small side uh, and they're catching them they're not gigging them some fishermen caught some also the Spanish uh, if you get a chance uh, hook up with someone like Mitch Cole and some of these captains and go go fishing with them if you don't have a boat and all Look up with Mitch Coleman. He, he has, I saw where he has some opening next week, especially during the week. And you can learn a lot about fishing and you also uh, catch some fish with these guys. They're really good. Uh, move, moving on down. Okay. Briefly, uh, okay. Cape, the fishing at Cape Sand Blast should be, uh, surf fishing should be really good this weekend. Okay, it's as simple as that. Apalachicola Bay, moving down toward the Apalachicola Bay system. The, What's great about Apalachicola Bay is that you can actually uh, get around those oyster bars. And there's some really good redfish around some oyster bars. And speaking of redfish, they released some here in Bay County uh, last week. And nobody told me about it. I would have covered it. The FWC and the CCA released, uh, what, a thousand? I don't even know how many, but I saw after they released them. And I would love to have filmed it and shared it with y'all about them releasing redfish because if you remember last year, I drove all the way down at Prescola and when they did the red, redfish release there and covered that uh, in this area right in here. So anyway, St. George Island uh, sh uh, should be good right on the end of the, well, I talk about it all the time, but surf fishing should be really good this, this weekend and next week. Okay, Carabell River, uh, I, the Carabell report I got from Seaquarter, that was a big red snapper I talked about, some really big red snapper they were, look, they were looking for some red grouper, which is legal down there, but I kept, they got the wrong red, the red snapper they were catching. So uh, if you're going to fish this weekend down there, one of my favorite spots, if you can get back there behind Dog Island, right here behind Dog Island, all in the area right in there, it is really some good fishing. And there's not very many people go up in there. And right there in the center of the screen, that area right there, they really hold some nice speckled trout over the years. And these are just some isolated places. Well, that Dog Island, then of course here, there's a really strong current coming through here, but surf fishing is going to be good right through here. And also, you remember some videos I did on the backside of the state park, if you get some live bait and all. So uh, that, that's just really good stuff. So anyway, and, and the winds will be dying down a little bit. If you remember what we talked about going solo, try to, if you got to go solo, you make sure you have your phone and you can talk to people and let them know where you are and what's going on. If they, and then if they don't hear from you in 30 minutes or something, they know something something wrong. I used to not believe that kind of stuff. I believe it now when you see those situations like that. So uh, just stay in contact with folks. Okay, we've got to wrap it up. We've uh, had some good shows this week. It's, you know, the students of the month and uh, a special guest coming in from Tallahassee and, and uh, Winter Haven uh, talking about the... Uh, uh, the big amendment. We're going to talk about that uh, more and more as we get along. But we've run out of time. It's been a great week. Thank you all for viewership. Y'all take care of outdoors now and you do something good this weekend for someone else and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.